Welcome to the Contreras Report. I am Raul Lowry Contreras, your correspondent. Let's start with President Joe Biden's pronouncement in Asia that the U.S. will militarily engage with Communist China if it attempts to conquer Taiwan. The United States and Asia, are we pivoting from Europe again? Question, is President Biden changing our focus from Europe to Asia again? Washington and New York appear to be caught by surprise because President Biden is saying things they don't want to hear. He is expressing a change from calculated ambiguity regarding a defense of Taiwan against mainland China. He says that the U.S. military would defend Taiwan against attacks by mainland China. His staff is pulling their hair out because the, quote, strategic ambiguity of our many years statements that we support Taiwan against threats by Chinese communists should remain ambiguous. That way, everyone is confused and everyone in Washington hopes that the mainland Chinese won't try to invade and conquer the island of Taiwan and its democratic 25 million people. This confusion has existed since President Jimmy Carter officially recognized the mainland China communists and withdrew official recognition, diplomatic recognition, of Taiwan. Carter and his following presidents have stepped out and proclaimed that we support Taiwan's independence and have constructed or reinforced our position that Taiwan should remain independent. Meanwhile, Two other areas of American interest, the Middle East and Europe, have occupied more of our recent time and attention than Asia. Asia, where we have had military and commercial interests since the 19th century. When we opened the Japan up to the world, the middle of the 19th century. Where the Japanese crushed the Russian Empire, where the Japanese built their own empire in a co-prosperity sphere that included parts of China, Korea, Southeast Asia, and countless islands in the Pacific, they topped it all that off with an attack on Pearl Harbor of the United States. The U.S. responded then with attention it had never paid to Asia and mounted the successful response with a complete crushing of Japan. We should note, however, that that attention came secondarily to our efforts to defeat Nazi Germany. Asia was second on our agenda, even during World War II. After the Japanese defeat and occupation by General Douglas MacArthur, the United States lost interest in Asia that resulted in another war, the Korean War, that soft-minded people called a police action. 34,000 dead Americans later, the U.S. returned to its normal Europe first in our attention. In the 60s, we stumbled into Vietnam because John F. Kennedy and his people had no clue about Southeast Asia. In case that name is unfamiliar to you, he was the President of the United States that took office in 1961 when there were 600 Americans in civilian clothes in Vietnam advising their military and the government. John Kennedy's Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, a Harvard whiz kid, admitted in a book years later that he hardly knew where Vietnam was while he was sending troops there to die. 58,000 dead Americans later, Richard Nixon ended that war by bringing the troops home starting on the first day of his presidency, January 20. 1969. Without the U.S., the corrupt South Vietnamese were overwhelmed. While Nixon was pulling out of Vietnam, he stepped up U.S. attention to Europe and the Middle East, where European diplomatic corruption had sliced up the Middle East after World War I into artificial states like Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, and Palestine. And that led them to engage in open war when native-born Jewish and European Jewish immigrants revolted, basically, and dumped British rule of Palestine and proclaimed its independence as the state of Israel. War again. Most observers believe, most objective observers believe that Richard Nixon 
no friend of Jewish people, stepped into the 1973 warfare between the Arab states and Israel and saved Israel from being wiped off the map. Without sending troops to help, Nixon pumped arms and supplies into Israel that allowed it to beat off five Arab nations. The U.S. had returned its attention to Europe with one important exception, China. Between Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and President Richard Nixon, a diversion from Nixon's Watergate troubles was necessary. Those troubles that forced him to resign the presidency in 1974. The Nixon-Kissinger duo embarked on a diplomatic endeavor that elevated the outcast mainland Chinese communists to a world-class relationship that basically split communist China and the Soviet Union. That fracture eventually led, two decades later, led to the fall of the Soviet Union. That fall, that collapse, benefited the United States to the extent that the huge military commitment by the U.S. to Europe dwindled to almost nothing. Then American presidents could pivot to Asia. So President Biden's words that the U.S. military will intervene if communist China launches attacks on Taiwan in an attempt to conquer Taiwan, are, those attempts are, will be meaningfully resisted. I agree with Biden's new position. Barack Obama had tried to ring, bring China with economics through a trade agreement with a number of Asian countries called the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement. That effort ended when anti-trade Donald J. Trump was elected in 2016. He withdrew America's participation in what would have been the largest trade agreement in history and that surrounded China with gigantic trade that the Chinese could not compete with. Trump's decision was stupid. Now comes President Joe Biden. He flatly stated that the U.S. will use its military against any effort to conquer Taiwan. That is not ambiguous. That's forthright. And though the White House staff vigorously tries to pull back Biden's statement, the president has spoken and the Chinese heard him, we hope. Pay attention to what happens in the South China Sea, where China is pompously trying to conquer an entire ocean through which 40% of all world trade passes, and to what happens in the Straits of Taiwan is vital these things are vital to the United States. It may be more vital than anything that happens in Europe. President Biden may be a stumbling Uncle Joe, but on Asia and our competition with China, Biden is right. Ambiguity has its place in diplomacy, but not in a worldwide economic and political struggle, a struggle to, that the United States must win in the long run. Let's take a break. We'll be right back.